All right, so you've decided to do the smart thing and watch foxnews.com. Original digital content here, and we are so glad that you have. I'm Harris Faulkner. And you know, I do a show called Fox Report on Sundays in prime time. We do a lot of breaking news and hard news. And then the second half of Fox Report, which I've done for five years now, the second half has something extra special called the Fox News Insiders. Political insiders. And I don't know if you've met these guys. Pat Cadell, Doug Schoen, both former advisors to presidents and pollsters to them as well, and Fox News contributors, and John Laboutlier, who is a former New York senator, or New York congressman, rather. Um, so today, I have the fiery Pat Cadell on set with me. And I'm so calm today. You are calm today. Well, it's calm and cool, cool inside, inside this venue yes. at the Republican National Convention in Cleveland, Ohio. I I'm glad that you're here. You and I are known on Sunday nights just to delve right into the issue. So I want to ask yeah. you, what is the importance of the convention in kind of American politics now? Well, now it's become, once upon a time, it was actually to make a decision of who you're choosing for candidate. In the modern era, that has not really been an issue. Since, since the 1950s, since uh, 1952, when every nomination has been on the first ballot. Um, now the conventions have tended to serve as a way to, for the parties, for the candidates to present themselves, mm -hmm. for voters to take the first really serious look, for many voters, mm -hmm. at, the can at the nominees and what they feel about them. Mm -hmm. We could have had a much more, two conventions that were more contested this year. That was in the running, but now that's sort of dissipated. Oh, because Bernie Sanders decided that he would capitulate. He would, yes, surrender without getting a his... A lot of his supporters are angry, by the way. They are well, beside themselves. And then we have the anti-Trump people, but they've sort of dissipated. They're still making rumblings, but that's all gone away, pretty much. But so what you have is a convention where, and remember, with two candidates who are really highly... Uh, they have negative ratings and feelings. Well, they're unlike. They're, they're not According liked. to the polling. Well, they're the most two dislike nominees in history. So this is an important point for them about how they're going to help themselves if they can, mm. particularly for Trump, I think, because in a way, even though he's been well known as mm -hmm. a political figure, he's new. Mm -hmm. Hillary has been as a political figure with us for a quarter of a century or more. Mm -hmm. So I think by... Uh, I think uh, Donald Trump's choice of his vice president, Pence, seems to have gone well. Indiana people, Governor Mike Pence? Yes. People seem to say that's a serious choice. My attitude is I think he, Pence will play, be his Joe Biden, which is a guy person. Oh, that's an interesting a, choice. Yeah. yeah can and, go and to the Hill, sense. talk to people, knows yeah. people, can help out. Um, and, uh, but at least it's a serious choice. It, it, I think that everyone's basically given and it. And why do you think Donald Trump doesn't get enough credit, perhaps, for that? Because, you know, when I just flip on the TV, and maybe we all watch different things, but I tend to watch a lot of other news, yeah. um, I, I hear this sort of, well, you know, there, there are rumors, and, which always makes me nervous. Uh, there's back chatter and whatnot about maybe Donald Trump is regretting having picked uh, Governor Pence and blah, 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 blah. And there may be some questions in his own mind. I mean, I think everybody does that. Like, did I choose, because he came out and said, Donald Trump, I chose him for the unity of the party. So then the questions come, well, does that mean he doesn't su support him, whatever? He seems like a guy, Donald Trump, that makes the decision based on what he thinks is needed. Why doesn't he get more credit for that? Well, because basically, I hate to say this, but it is, it is undeniable. In most of the mainstream conventional media, where his rise has been both unanticipated, totally. And has helped them in the ratings, and I might And has helped add. them in the ratings. They, they don't mind they that. Because they can't go one day oh, without that's... trying to get him on right. there. Unanticipated. Even though they tear him down. And then they, uh, unanticipated and unwelcomed in one way besides the ratings because they don't think he belongs there. And they are so, I have never seen a presidential election, except maybe, and I was too young, even me in 64, with Goldwater, mm -hmm. where the press has been so united in its, in its opposition to a candidate. And in uh, particularly, the one I call that bubble, that Washington yeah, political class Beltway, bubble. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and so they don't give him credit. I watched him last, you know, I watched the, uh, the interview last night with the two of them, Pence mm -hmm. and Trump, yeah. And I thought on the 60 minutes, I thought, gosh, they really are comfortable with each other. Yeah, their and body language. The body language. You're, you're really, really into great. that. Um, really great, comfortable. And Trump said, now remember, we have Donald Trump, who many people say, man, don't listen to anyone. He's great. You know, there's, yeah. there's things that they say. And he said, I welcome Governor Pence. I welcome Mike Pence coming in and arguing with me. 
about a decision. And Pence said, I'm always going to argue with if I disagree. Well, my God, is that not supposed to be Donald Trump? Isn't that important enough to point out that they seem to have that relationship? But the, the, everything is to fit a narrative, and the narrative is, is a very negative one to Trump, and he's not getting credit. And with Thursday night, it's his chance to go way over the head of the media, and it's a very critical moment, and connect particularly with some groups like women and others uh -oh. who have had a problem. Somebody really wants you. So sorry, can we can we quash it. a rumor right now? Because uh, people were texting and tweeting about the fact that you're speaking at the Republican National Convention. Not that's, me. Yeah, that's not actually happening. No, no, not me. Somebody else. No, okay. no. There, there, There'll there be was, lots of others. No, no, no. No, I'm not speaking at anything. But you're speaking but here. I'm speaking here. On FoxNews.com. That's, I, that's and, right. And we're thrilled. So Pat Cadell, Fox News Political Insiders, for people who are new to this because they're watching us on Facebook Live and on our digital uh, platforms across Fox News, I, I want to tell people why it's such a destination point on Sunday nights and why it's become become that. And it isn't because you guys are so good looking and dastardly well, creative sure. and because those things are, might be true. Um, and we always have fun. We're good friends on Sunday yep. nights. But I think it's because you saw something two years ago that has come to fruition. And that is that people are not only fed up with the narrow minded, narrow casting of politics and putting people in compartmentalized boxes and trading on their skin color and their gender right. and this voting block and this one. Not only are they fed up with that, the establishment, but something that you call political fraud. You've said it on Sunday yeah. nights. Talk to me. Well, it's a belief, and it, it is the unspoken word in politics, which is the vast majority of Americans have considered, and almost never asked in polls, but 75% in the Gallup poll, and some more five that, 75% see this system as mainly corrupt. And that is huge. And they feel that the system is rigged against ordinary people. And this cuts people, across party lines? And it cuts across everybody. Okay, so Democrats, Democrats independents, Republicans. Republicans? The country is united in its disaffection and dislike of the political lead in the establishment. And they, feel, and they fear, look, uh, Harris, two-thirds of them believe the country is in decline. That is a message nobody is saying politically except... The, the, Trump said that to some extent. Sanders, what right. we're having the most important the thing two, that happened. The two men who had the greatest following popularity was right. this well, primary. Bernie season. Sanders upset what was supposed to be an easy coronation run for Hillary Clinton. And by the way, I think with a little better campaigning, would have unseated her. Wow. Donald Trump knocked out. 16. Others in your party worried about that too. Is that why they didn't help him out? Yes, they were terrified. They were terrified. I actually think welcomed it because I thought. It was a breath of fresh air against an established order in a party. Do you think a socialist could have won the White House? Uh, he's a Democratic, so no, maybe not, but I think he would have been. He was, let me just put it, his advantage was he was viewed as very authentic. But the thing is, well, the yeah, against her. Against her. For against sure. her. Yeah, but look, the, the real reason shows. is the American people are rising up. We take it back. Now, there may not have been perfect vehicles, but they have acted this way in a way that has neither been anticipated or two years ago for sure, till I started talking about it then, that I believed it might happen. And it has happened even beyond what I thought. And the American people are, this is not, they're doing what their forefathers did in the 1820s and other times. They're reasserting themselves as the owners of the country. Are you worried about our nation right now? I'm terrified. Why? I'm terrified because we seem to be things, it seems like the, the flywheel has come off and, and the center mm. is not holding. We well, have people, visual. we have people, we have Americans who are, you know, when we talk about division, and never in my life, I was came out of the civil rights movement as a teenager in the 1960s in the South. That was my introduction to politics. I have never seen America since with a division on identity. What group are you with? This, that, and the other. Particularly on race has been like it is. Right after everyone thought eight years ago, this is, we had reached a whole new level of, of acceptance. This suspicions. That part of it is our politics, which has divided people, as you said before, which is the enemy is, the, the enemy is evil. Not as my countrymen who I disagree with, but this notion of demonizing. Well, but Hillary fellow... Clinton has not helped that narrative because no, very early not. on in the primary process, she said that her biggest enemies were whom? Republicans. She said that openly. She said Republicans. She said, you look at what Elizabeth Warren, the language she's been using. I guarantee you if a Republican were using the language to describe senior officials, if a Republican were using it to describe Hillary Clinton and, her, and, and Bernie Sanders, they would be being pillared. 
it is. Do they get a pass because they're women? I don't. Warren know, and I think it's more of a pass because the media agrees with them. They're more. Look, this is a very biased media, and one of the fears I have is the American people look at the media and they say, you know, you guys are a great deal responsible for this because you have been told us the truth and you've been shoving things down our throats. And, the, and that perception is dangerous for those of us, as we all do, yeah. care about our First Amendment because ultimately news is what is supposed to protect us. When the media gets in the tank and decides its job is not only tell you who to vote for, but to tell you what, what truth you may know or not know, then the American people lose confidence. But they see a system where everyone is turned against everyone and no one speaks for them. Wow. Notice Trump's latest message. I am not here running. I am your messenger. You know what he's been saying that the last couple well, of weeks? Well, he said one he's of the really most memorable good. lines that he had in a speech recently was when he said, Hillary Clinton wants you to be with her and I want to be yeah, with you. The button. I, saw I want to be with you. That's right. The platform right. button. I saw this. I was watching, believe it or not, the platform hearings on C-SPAN because I'm a junkie. <laughs> I watch C-SPAN too. Yeah, I know. It's and you, I me, and my grandmother right. back in the day. But I'm watching God and all soul. of the Clinton delegates, as opposed to Sanders delegates, have that Hillary, I'm with her. And Trump said, her button is I'm with her, my button is I'm with, I'm you. with you. And boy, right. I'll tell you, that sums up the election. You know, real quickly, minute. before I let you go, because I know everybody on this, this floor at the RNC convention is running around and doing different things, so we were fortunate to get Pat Cadell for a few minutes. Before I let you go with the media, one of the things that I'm observing, because, you know, we, we get a lot of criticism when we walk around these venues, because all media are here. I mean, oh, everybody everywhere. has come from all over the globe to cover the convention, and they do. Uh, that's that's typical, but they say, oh, you know, Fox News, you know, you you guys, uh, why is your audience so big? You said a lot of the mainstream media are not telling the truth. Pat, if they could figure out how to sell the truth, they would. They hate us because we figured out yeah, how to sell the truth. Right, exactly. I mean, we, we we know what the truth looks like, and we tell it, and we can make it interesting so people want to watch it. They hate us because they ain't us. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's the best slogan I've heard. They hate us because they ain't I us. stole it from a movie. There, there you go. I like it. It's exactly anyway. true. And that's what's been so much fun about being with Fox is, I mean, you can be out, you can be unconventional like you I am. You can be outnumbered and keep speaking. And they, and that's right. You can be a man. Uh, and you I, and I'm I, looking forward to that, the day that I'm outnumbered. Outnumbered. we got to make it happen. In yeah. the meantime, you yeah. and I have a special with the Fox News Political Absolutely. Insiders coming up Saturday, July 23rd, kicking the off Democratic Party. the Democrat National Convention on the Democrat Party, and it's going to be edgy because? Well, because we're actually going to get into what has happened to my party, Doug Schoen's party, and John's going to help Lebanon as our Republican voice. But talk about the, the movements and the trends and what is happening in the Democratic Party between, it's particularly its young people, who are in mass saying, we don't like what's going we on. saw it with Bernie and Sanders. Bernie, and 80 percent of them, 75 And where will they go if Hillary and, and goes forward? And that's the question. We yeah. don't know yet. And that is part of this problem. And the Democrats seem not to want their future. And that is an interesting challenge. Wow. Makes me want to watch my own special. Yeah, exactly. All me right. too. Thank Good. you. 8 p.m. Eastern, Saturday Good. night, July 23rd. Good, Good to Thank see you, my friend. Good to see okay, you. we're going to take a quick break right here. Stay with us.